As the case came to the Supreme Court of the United States, we realized that this could be a capstone. This could be a really significant victory for the pro-life movement that 20, 30, and 40 years from now could be looked upon as a crowning achievement. What was interesting about that case was that I had argued the case uh, at the beginning of the term, which was October, and here we were at the end of the term with no decision yet. Now, also, uh, Thurgood Marshall had resigned, he did not hear the case, and Clarence Thomas had not yet been confirmed. So I argued the case in October, expecting to get a decision, knowing it was a controversial case, it was involving abortion protests, towards the end of the term, which would be June. I got a call in June, all right, but it was not a decision. It was the court requesting re-argument. So we had that summer to prepare for a re-argument, and they asked one additional question. So the initial thought was that it was four to four and it was a tie, but when we saw the questions that were asked, we realized there was much more to it. The Supreme Court granted unlimited certiorari in Bray which meant that all the questions proposed in the petition to the court could be entertained. We made it a very narrow case, uh, and sometimes that's the best strategy of the Supreme Court of the United States. Uh, we had lost in the lower court, so our job was to win. Uh, how do you win a case like that involving abortion protests and the federal statutes are involved? We said the case had no business being in federal court, that if someone blockaded an abortion clinic, at best, it would be a state trespass action. It would not be a federal claim. They have tried to bludgeon us and to crush this movement by an illegitimate use of the federal judiciary. This is simply about trespass or disorderly conduct. If we win, it's a victory for all protest groups. We took it out of the context of abortion and put it into the context generally of civil disobedience. Would you turn the acts of Martin Luther King Jr. when they were, he was encouraging civil disobedience, like the blockades of the lunch counters that were segregated, would you encourage that to be a federal case against Martin Luther King? And the answer would be no, of course not. At best, it would be a trespass action. And the Supreme Court was very clear. And they said, opposition to abortion is not discrimination against women. And then we had six justices of the Supreme Court agree with us. So it became a very significant decision, one that holds to this day.